it can be quite difficult to come up with a good sequel. Especially when you're a legendary aircraft designer like Willy Messerschmitt, whose BF-110 fighter bombers were part of the spearhead of the German Blitzkrieg. But when it came time to replace the 110, Messerschmitt somehow managed to create not one, but two of the most disliked and least successful heavy fighters of the Second World War, the ME-210 and 410. Throughout history, some machines are regarded as great. Their pioneering innovation, groundbreaking performance, market leading success or battlefield glory have made them legends and they have gone on to be enshrined in the history books. This is not their story. These instead are the stories of the forgotten many. The failed designs, sales flops and occasional unsung heroes that have become the yardstick against which the legends are compared. Yet they deserve to be so much more than that, for in their own unique way, they are parts of history. The story of Messerschmitt's World War II heavy fighters actually begins before the war with the Messerschmitt Bf 110. This aircraft, designed by Willy Messerschmitt during his time as chief designer of the Bavarian Aircraft Works, or BFW, in the mid-1930s, became one of the company's most successful designs due to its strength, range and versatility. It would go on to play an important part in World War II, as a long-range escort fighter and fighter bomber, and later as a radar-equipped night fighter defending occupied territory from Allied air raids. But despite the early success of the Bf 110, the German Luftwaffe recognised that the aircraft would need a replacement, and ideally before it was outmoded by the enemy. The quest for a replacement began in 1938, a year before the Second World War began, and in fact, even before the 110's first flight. Messerschmitt's designers identified that, while the Bf 110's speed and range were positive attributes, the type's relative lack of defensive armament and aerodynamic issues such as the long nose and external weapons pylons needed to be improved. Messerschmitt combined these improvements into the ME-210, an aircraft which, while looking radically different to the 110, was intended to use many of the same parts. Compared to the 110 it was planned to replace, the 210 had a shorter nose, which improved manoeuvrability by being closer to the centre of gravity, as well as the capacity to carry two 500kg bombs internally to cut down on drag. It was armed with two MG-151 cannons and two MG-17 machine guns in the nose, as well as a pair of machine guns mounted in remote controlled turrets on the rear fuselage for defensive firepower. The design was pretty advanced for the late 1930s, but unfortunately, while the ME-210 sounded good on paper, it was a huge disappointment when it first took to the air. The shortened airframe made it unstable in yaw, and the aircraft was prone to stalling, which is how the second prototype was lost in September 1940. In fact, after the 210's first flight on the 2nd of September 1939, the test pilot commented that it had all the least desirable attributes an aeroplane could possibly possess. The problems with the ME-210 were obviously quite serious. So serious, in fact, that Messerschmitt had to take their design back to the drawing board. Some of the more major fixes included giving the ME-210 a single large rudder instead of the twin tail fins off the first prototype, and eventually lengthening the rear fuselage to make the airframe more stable. The design, now classified the ME-210C, still wasn't perfect, but compared to the early ME-210s, it was far easier to fly. In fact, the 210C's performance was such an improvement on the original that it even achieved an export order with the Hungarian Air Force. The Hungarians would eventually operate 179 examples of the ME-210C, and even acquired a license to produce the aircraft locally. But the Luftwaffe still wanted a better plane, and the ME-210 fiasco had done serious damage to Messerschmitt's reputation. The best solution Messerschmitt came up with was to take the nearly there 210C and modify it further, 
until it became an almost totally new aircraft. They decided to give the new plane a redesigned wing to further improve handling, changed the engines to Daimler-Benz 603s, which developed more power than the ME210's DB605s, and added automatic leading edge slats, a feature first trialled on later 210s, to reduce the likelihood of stalling in a steep turn. These changes took Messerschmitt's heavy fighter a long way from the original ME210 design, and the decision was made, partly driven by the 210's bad PR, to reclassify it. The new aircraft was dubbed the ME410, and first took to the air in March 1942, with mass production of the type beginning in January 1943. Initially, there were two main variants, the ME410A1 Schnell bomber, which was, as the name suggests, a fast bomber variant, and the ME410A2 Zestora, which was a heavy fighter. However, the heavy fighter was never produced, with its armament being used as part of a conversion program we'll go through a bit later on. Instead, Messerschmitt built the A3, a fast reconnaissance plane. The ME410 was upgraded again to the ME410B, which had upgraded armament and further improvements. And, as with other German aircraft of the Second World War, there were many sub-variants with different weapons and configurations. Some of the more notable ones included the B-5, a proposed torpedo bomber, the B-6, another anti-shipping variant fitted with a cannon and equipped with radar, and the B-1 and B-3, which would replace the A-1 and A-3 models respectively. As the war neared its end, Messerschmitt further modified the design to respond to the threat from high-altitude bombers. This led to the development of the ME-410C, which featured supercharged engines and extended outer wing sections made of wood to save on aluminium. However, problems with wood manufacture, partly due to Allied air raids on wood and adhesive suppliers, led to the development of the ME-410H as a replacement. The ME-410H would have been similar to the ME-410C, albeit with metal outer wing sections rather than wooden ones. Either way, the war ended before either of these high-altitude heavy fighters could be constructed. For now though, let's get back to the regular ME-410, which entered service in 1943, and was first used as a fast bomber in small-scale night raids near the end of the Battle of Britain. Initially, it proved fairly successful in this role, being able to evade many of the RAF's night fighters with its high speed. However, the British Mosquito night fighters had comparable performance to the 410, and as the RAF's pilots gained proficiency, the German fighter bombers began to suffer losses. Although these night raids were generally better at evading the Royal Air Force than the daytime attacks during the early Battle of Britain, the smaller aircraft used meant the raids tended to do less damage. This was in stark contrast to the Allied raids over Germany and occupied Europe, which by 1943 sent hundreds of bombers each day and each night to attack targets across the Third Reich. As the raids over occupied Europe grew in size and intensity, it meant that soon the ME-410 went from being a bomber itself to intercepting the Allied bombers. Most ME-410 bomber destroyers were converted from other variants and given the suffix slash U for Umrust Bausatze, which literally means conversion kit. There were three main conversions, U-1, a reconnaissance version, U-2, which had a pair of 20mm auto cannons, and the U-4, which had, and I'm not making this up, two 30mm MK-108 cannons and a 50mm high-velocity gun derived from that on the Panzer III tank to take out enemy bombers. There was also a prototype version with a sort of missile revolver in the bomb bay, six rocket mortars and a rotary launcher that could all be fired within two seconds of the pilot lining up on the bomber and pushing the trigger. The first trials of the weapon nearly blew up the aircraft it was installed on, but the system was eventually refined to the point of being usable in combat. There is evidence to show that US bomber crews did encounter this weapon, but the unusual revolving rocket launcher doesn't appear to have been used widely. Getting back to those rockets, I believe that Jerry can reload his rocket guns from inside the ship. 
think you can. That would be my guess, too. I saw at least nine bursts from racket guns on one ME-210. Nine bursts, huh? Talking about 210s, there was one that came in and shot a cluster. It looked like clay pigeons to me. I tell you, those things looked like baseballs to me. Can you describe that more fully? How did they react? Well, they didn't look like baseballs. It was more like streamlined and smoked all the way down, but they didn't explode. They didn't explode, huh? No. On the whole, the ME-410 wasn't overly successful in its role as an interceptor. Although its high speed and heavy armament made it effective against unprotected bombers, the aircraft's large size and relatively poor maneuverability meant that heavy fighters like the ME-410 often fell prey to the lighter, more agile escort fighters protecting the bomber streams. The rapidly increasing loss rate led to the remaining 410s being pulled from bomber destroyer service and being placed on reconnaissance duty where they could perform more effectively. Ultimately, the long and difficult development of the ME-210 and 410 meant that the aircraft arrived after heavy fighters had been surpassed technologically and long after the Luftwaffe had been forced to abandon long-range strike missions and adopt a primarily defensive strategy. These factors, combined with attrition from wartime losses, reliability issues and unresolved problems with the design, led to a high loss rate in service and of the estimated 362 ME-210s and 1,189 ME-410s produced, just two ME-410s survived today. So with all that said, how come Messerschmitt's mid-war Zerstorers were such poor performers compared to the BF-110 they were supposed to replace? Well, there are two main reasons. First, the ME-210's dangerous handling issues led to poor performance in service, and by the time the ME-410 was able to rectify most of these issues, the air war had changed so much that it wasn't able to fulfil its new purpose effectively. Now, we've already talked a bit about the ME-210's problems, and some of the ways Messerschmitt tried to improve them. To recap, the 210 was plagued with dangerous handling issues, which ultimately required a major redesign of the tail, rear fuselage and wings to cure most of them. Part of the reason for the poor handling was probably down to the ME-210's unusual design, which placed the cockpit and bomb bay fairly close to the centre of gravity and originally had a short rear fuselage. This resulted in stability issues in the pitch and yaw axes, which made the ME-210 overly sensitive to control inputs and harder to recover. The relatively high sweep back of the wings was an issue too. It made the 210 difficult to fly at low speeds and notorious for stalls and spins. In order to improve the ME-210 design, Messerschmitt made several changes, beginning by enlarging the tail surfaces and changing from a twin rudder to a single tail fin. The wings were also substantially modified by reducing the sweep back on their leading edges and fitting slats to improve stability at lower speeds. In addition, the DB605 engines used on the 210 were replaced with newer, more powerful DB603s. And finally, a lengthened tail section cured the worst of the 210's handling vices and was able to improve the 210's flawed design to the point where the Luftwaffe finally declared it fit for service. However, World War II was still raging and events on the battlefield were moving faster than the design team could work. Originally, the plane was supposed to be in service by late 1939 or early 1940, when the Luftwaffe was acting as the spearhead of the Blitzkrieg, and when the BF-110 was used to great effect as a heavy fighter. Had the 210 been ready for service, its high speed and internal bomb load would have allowed it not only to replace the 110 as a long-range escort, but also supplement the Stuka in the dive bombing role. However, the 210's handling issues, combined with the increased workload placed on Messerschmitt because, well, there was a war on, meant that the ME-410 was finally ready for service in 1943. By this time, the Luftwaffe's priorities were no longer focused on long-range strike missions, but on defending German skies against incoming Allied bombers. Unfortunately, the ME-410 was ill-suited in its new role as a bomber interceptor, especially when it came up against escort fighters. For most of 1943, this wasn't as much of an issue, as the lightnings, spitfires and thunderbolts used to protect bombers didn't quite have the range to escort them all the way to targets in Germany. 
This allowed heavy fighters like the Messerschmitt 410 to find some success by shooting down the bombers after the escorts had been forced to turn back. However, from late 1943 on, two major changes turned the big Messerschmitts from the Hunter into the Hunted. The first major change came in late 1943, in the form of a change in tactics by the US Army Air Forces. This change, instigated by US General Jimmy Doolittle, was to cut the escorts free of the bomber stream and allow them to fly ahead, letting them engage the Luftwaffe's interceptors before the bombers arrived. While the ME-210s and 410s were effective against unescorted bombers, and had a fighting chance when the escort fighters were forced to go slow and stay close to the bomber stream, in single combat against escort fighters, the bulky Zerstorers were at a significant disadvantage. In one instance, a sortie launched by 2nd Group of ZG-26 on the 11th of April 1944 found initial success, with a combined flight of ME-110s and 410s shooting down 10 enemy bombers. However, an attempt on a second sortie went far worse, as Allied escort fighters lay in wait for the interceptors. As a result of the ambush, the Germans lost 11 planes, 16 crewmen were killed and 3 wounded. It was a dramatic illustration of the disadvantage faced by the German heavy fighter crews against the lighter, nimbler Allied escorts. This disadvantage only grew greater with the introduction of the P-51 Mustang to escort service throughout the beginning of 1944. Now, the Allied bombers had protection to, over and from their targets, and the Luftwaffe's pilots found themselves up against a fast, agile fighter that could outperform or outgun most of their aircraft. The improved escort fighters, combined with the changes in fighter deployment, crippled the ME-410s. The heavy interceptors were set up to shoot down bombers, not fighters, and their large size and relatively sluggish handling made them easy prey for fighter escorts in dogfights. Despite the bravery of their pilots and the relative success of radar-equipped 410s as night fighters, losses were still unsustainable, and the type was withdrawn from interceptor duties and placed on reconnaissance, where its high speed and long range were most effective. So, with all that considered, let's return to our ME-410, and to the ME-210 that came before it. Ultimately, it was a design with great potential, but as a result of the ME-210 being fundamentally flawed as an aircraft, and heavy fighters as a whole no longer being effective by the time the improved ME-410 finally entered production, that potential remained largely unfulfilled. Now, obviously a few bad Messerschmitts didn't cost Germany the war, but the dangerous characteristics of the 210, and the fact that it was rushed into service before they were fixed, meant the Luftwaffe was forced to choose between the outdated BF-110, or the dangerous ME-210, to fulfil the heavy fighter role. When Messerschmitt went back to the drawing board, the delays incurred in creating the ME-410 meant that it entered combat in a role it wasn't suited for, and suffered heavy losses against smaller, more agile Allied fighters as a result. Nevertheless, the advanced designs of Messerschmitt's Zerstorers, and the bravery of their pilots, makes them important parts of history. <laughs>